So in John 6, verse 56, it talks about receiving Christ. John 6, verse 56. And it says, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. So what do you think of people thought when they heard this? They thought Jesus was speaking of cannibalism. But what Jesus was speaking about is that when we eat Him, our spirits receive life. He was speaking, speaking of the spiritual man. Now when you eat Jesus, your spirit receives life. And then because your spirit receives life, it flows out into your soul and into your body. Your soul and body then also receive life. So just as the physical man requires food for life, our spiritual man receives life when it's joined to Jesus. It receives life from Jesus. Hallelujah. When you partake of Jesus. Because who is Jesus? Jesus is the bread of life. And is the life of men. It says in John 1 verse 4, it says, In Christ was life. And the life was the light of men. So in Christ was life. Now why did Jesus come to give us life? Like we know in John 10 verse 10, it says, I have come that they may have life. Not just have life. Jesus wants you to have life. And they, and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus wants us to have life and life more abundantly. But how do we receive this life? Through partaking of Jesus. Jesus is life. And when you partake of Jesus, you receive life. You have life more abundantly. Jesus said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So just as the life of a root or a tree is in the soil, the soil has lots of life, the tree or the root receives life, and a fish in the water, and a branch in the vine, the Christian's life comes from their union with Christ, being joined to Christ. That's where we receive life. Hallelujah. The believer's true life is found to be in union with Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible presents salvation as a life transforming experience. Change is one of the distinguishing characteristics of a true believer. Yet failure to understand that this change takes place in the spirit first is then reflected in the outward thoughts and actions proportional to the way we renew our minds has caused much confusion. So what does that mean? It means that when you get born again, your spirit is what gets changed completely. The Bible says we are new creations in Christ. So your spirit gets changed and it gets sealed with the Holy Spirit and Christ lives in the spirit. Now, does your body change when you get born again? Does your soul change when you get born again? No. Your body and soul stay the same. If you were fat before you got saved, you're fat after you get saved. If you were ugly before you got saved, you're ugly after you get saved. If you're white before you got saved, you're not going to change to a Jew or something. If you were a male before you got saved, you're still a male after you get saved. There's no transgender. Okay? So the same way, what gets changed? Your spirit. Your spirit changes and is a new creation. Hallelujah. So how does your body and soul get changed then? Through renewing the mind. So the, the, the connection between your spirit and your soul is your heart. That's the connection between your soul and your spirit. So that's why the Bible says it's so important to guard your heart. Because when you guard your heart, that allows the spirit life to flow into your soul and then into your body. And when you renew your mind, you allow that spirit life to flow into your soul and then into your body, that resurrection life. Hallelujah. 
Now the spirit is perfect. The spirit is sinless. And when I started meditating on these things many years ago, like maybe like even 10 years ago, sometimes when you hear these words, it feels like blasphemy almost. It feels like heresy. Especially to the religious person. When the religious person hears this, it feels like, sounds like blasphemy. But it's what the Word of God says. So say, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Say, I'm sinless. I'm sinless. Now, immediately you would say, but I'm not sinless, I'm not perfect. But you're perfect and sinless in your spirit, not in your body and soul. In your spirit, you are perfect. In your spirit, you are sinless. The Bible actually goes so far as to say in Hebrews 12 verse 22, let me read, I was going to read verse, let's read from verse 23. It says, we have come to Mount Zion, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just, what's just, righteous men made perfect. So did you guys hear that? The spirits are made perfect. So you've received a perfect spirit. Hallelujah. Say I'm perfect. I'm perfect. In my spirit. In my spirit. Hallelujah. Now this spirit cannot sin. This spirit does not sin and it cannot sin. It says in 1 John 3 verse 9, Whoever has been born of God. Now all of us are born of God. Hey, I'm born of God. Say I'm born of God. I'm born of God. So what does that mean? Does not sin. The spirit that has been born again does not sin. For his seed remains in him. What does that mean? Christ remains in us. So in your spirit, Christ remains. And this is again when people say, once saved, always saved is not true. It is true. Why? Because Christ remains in your spirit. So if Christ sends you to hell, he has to send this perfect spirit to hell, which he can't do. Christ remains in your spirit. And what is the spirit? The spirit cannot sin. It says in 1 John 3 verse 9, the spirit cannot sin. Why? Because he has been born of God. Hallelujah. To say again, my spirit is perfect. And it cannot sin. And it cannot sin. So the real you, because who's the real you? Your spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. This body isn't the real you, this body is temporary. You're going to get a new body. But your spirit is going to be the same spirit for eternity. But this body is going to get changed into a new body. And your soul can also changes. How? Through renewing the mind. Hallelujah. So the real you is perfect and sinless. And that sounds, if you just say that, most churches will think you a heretic. Why? Because they don't believe it. They don't know that there's a body, soul, and spirit. In your spirit, you are perfect. In your spirit, you are sinless. You cannot sin. It's impossible. So everything that is true of Jesus is true of your born again spirit. Everything. Everything that is true of Jesus is true of you in your born again spirit. Why? Because Jesus is in your born again spirit and the Holy Spirit seals that born again spirit. Hallelujah. So your spiritual salvation is com complete. But your physical and you can say your soulish salvation is not complete yet. Your soulish salvation is based on or gets completed as you renew your mind. And your physical salvation will be completed when Jesus gives you a new body. Hallelujah. But He's already paid for it. He's already paid for your soulish salvation and your uh, physical salvation. So at salvation you receive the same spirit that you will have for all eternity. It will not have to be changed again or cleansed again. It has been sealed with the Holy Spirit and is therefore sanctified and perfected forever. 
Let's read Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In Christ you also trusted. Say, I trust in Christ. I trust in Christ, I trust in Christ alone. I trust in Christ alone. Why? After you heard the word of truth. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. So after you heard the word of truth, truth you trusted in Christ. The gospel of your salvation. What's the word of truth? The gospel of salvation. In whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So your spirit has been sealed. So God seals very well. It's not like me when I seal here to try and protect my stuff from rust or moths or whatever or mold. You know, if you seal the rice and you put it, in the, uh, put it somewhere, when you open it, you'll see there's lots of little rhino bugs in it eating the rice or whatever or moths. God seals. When God seals, He seals properly. So you are sealed. In your spirit, you are sealed, vacuum packed with the Holy Spirit. In your spirit, your spirit is wall to wall Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your spirit cannot exit or cannot get, go out of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Amen. Hebrews 10 verse 10 says, By God's will. So what's God's will? By God's will, you have. Say have. have. So not will or shall or in the future. God will has have but by God's will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all so in your spirit you are holy say I am holy. holy in your spirit you are already sanctified and you are already holy hallelujah because who lives in your spirit the Holy Spirit so if your spirit isn't holy and what's the Holy Spirit doing then? You are holy, sanctified. So Jesus lives in the spirit of believers. Amen. And all that He is, is available to you. If you depend on Him instead of your own abilities. All that Jesus is, you are. Say, all that Jesus is. I am. I am. Wow. Isn't that powerful? But not in your body. Not in your flesh. Not in your soul. But in your spirit. Amen. So all that Jesus is, I am. So let's take a look at what Jesus is. And then you'll know that's who you are. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24 it says, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Wow. In verse 30 it says, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. If you guys want to turn to it, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. Say again, all that Jesus is, I am. All that Jesus is, I am. So it says, but of God, you are in Christ Jesus. Wow. But of God, you are in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. Who became for us, not will be, he has become. Who became for us wisdom. So Jesus has become for me what? Wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Then verse 51 says, But as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So you can't boast in your body. Like look at my muscles. Or look at my good looks. Or look at like how, my abs or whatever. I don't know. Look at my money. Look at my house. You can't boast in the flesh or in your body. Paul says I have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. But when you boast, you boast of what's in your spirit. Hey, you glory of what's in your spirit. Now, what's in your spirit? The power of God, the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, and the redemption of God. So that means you can go and say thank you 
Father, thank you, Abba, I am the power of God in Christ. Thank you, Abba, I am the wisdom of God in Christ. Thank you, Abba, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Abba, I am the sanctification, the holiness of God in Christ. And thank you, Abba, Father, I am the redemption of God in Christ. Hallelujah. That's amazing. And when you say that the first time, it feels like blasphemy. Why? Because your body and your soul rebels against it. But it's true in your spirit. So say, I am the power of God in Christ. I am the power of God in Christ. Now this power is not just any power. What power is? It's dunamis power. Miracle working power. Now how do you activate this power? How does God release His power? Through His mouth. Through His tongue. Through His hands. And through His knowing. His knowledge. Knowledge is power. Right? Don't they say that knowledge is power? So, I am the tongue of God in Christ. When you speak... You speak God's words. When you pray in tongues, when you speak His word, God's word is voice activated. When you lay hands on the sick, the Bible says they will recover. And I am the knowledge of God in Christ. In Mark 16 verse 17, it says, And these signs will follow those who believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. So what happens when you're a believer? There will be signs. There will be signs. And there's five signs. Okay, five is grace. Just like this five, who I am. I am the power of God. I am the wisdom of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am the sanctification, the holiness of God. And I am the redemption of God. Now there's five signs when you believe. The first one, so what did we say? Power is the tongue and the hand. Hey? And the knowing. So tongue, what does the tongue do? It speaks. So a sign that you're a believer is you will speak. And what will you, what will you do? In Jesus' name, you will cast out demons. Eh? So you have, the, I am the power of God in Christ. So I can cast out demons. If there's a demon, I can cast out. If there's a spirit, I can bind it. Eh? Or I can loose and I can bind. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And then... I will speak with new tongues. You can speak in tongues. Because when you speak in tongues, you are releasing the power of God, the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Then the hands. They will take up serpents. How do you take it with your hand? You will take up serpents. And they will not harm you. You will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt you. And then they will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. Hallelujah. Say, I have the tongue of God in Christ. I have the tongue of God in Christ. I have the hands, the hand of God in Christ. And I have the knowledge of God in Christ. Now, how do you know you've got the knowledge of God? 1 John 2 verse 20. My dad also quoted this this morning. 1 John 2 verse 20. You have an anointing. Say, I have. All of these is not in the future. I have right now. We're in my spirit. I have an anointing from the Holy One. And I know all things. Say, I know all things. In your spirit, you know all things. Because in your body, in your brain, you for I forgot where I put my pick just now. Eh? In my body, I don't know all things. In my mind, I don't know all things. But in my spirit, I know all things. Now, how do you release that knowledge? You know, through asking God. God, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your knowledge. And also through praying in tongues. Reading the word. Hallelujah. Renewing your mind. Saying, declaring, I've got the mind of Christ. So, these are speaking gifts. These are knowing gifts. And these are doing gifts. Or you can say hand gifts. So, tongue gifts, speaking gifts, knowing gifts, and hand doing gifts. And that's the exact gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7. It says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So these signs 
aren't, are not just for you. Why are these signs given? For the benefit of the church, for people, and to glorify Jesus. Amen. So it's for the profit of all. And what are these gifts? So they're easy to remember. So say, knowing gifts, knowing gifts, then speaking gifts, and doing gifts. So there's nine. So it's three. You can, they actually, you can say almost a bit they're together because it's a gift. But they actually together. You can actually say all of them are speaking, knowing, and doing. But some of them are more speaking and more doing and more knowing. Okay? But the first one is the word of wisdom. And what's that? That's a knowing gift. Then it's the word of knowledge. That's obviously a knowing gift. Then it's to the discernment of spirits. That's also a knowing gift. But when you know it, then you'll say it. Eh? <laughs> and then there's the faith, the gift of faith. What's that? A doing gift. But sometimes when you have a gift of faith, you'll also know. You'll know that you know that this will happen when you do it. But it's a doing gift. Then there's the gifts of healings. That's a doing gift. You lay hands on the sick. Then it's the working of miracles, a power gift, a doing gift. Then the speaking gifts are prophecy and different kinds of tongues and then the interpretation of the tongues. But why are these gifts given? They are given for the benefit, the profit of all. And can you control these gifts? No. It's as the Holy Spirit wills. But there's one gift that you can control. Hey, which one is that? The gift of praying in tongues. Because you can activate praying in tongues anytime. It says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, Therefore I remind you to stir up, fan into flame, the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. The tongue is like a fire. Hey? Put, put out your tongue. Uh, uh, uh. Touch it. Come. Huh? Say this is a fire. This is a flame. And when you speak in tongues, you fan into flame the gifts. So the more you speak in tongues, the more you activate the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, interpretation of tongues, the discernment of spirits, gifts of healings, faith and miracles. Hallelujah. And then it says, when you speak in tongues, what happens? It says... That God has given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Not a spirit of fear. So the more you speak in tongues, the more you release that spirit of power. That spirit of love. And that spirit of a sound mind. Why? Just for yourself. No, for the profit of all. For the benefit of the church. And to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, say, I am the wisdom of God in Christ. I am the wisdom of God in in Christ I have the wisdom of God in my spirit now why do you receive wisdom wisdom makes you successful wisdom makes you a success wisdom gives you success so wisdom helps you to do the right thing at the right time at the right place to say the right thing at the right time to be at the right place at the right time and that you can't learn you can't learn it from someone. You can only receive it as a gift. Amen. Because no university and no, no person can tell you, no, be at this place at that time. You know, it's only a gift that you can receive. But like, you know, when you submit to some people, submit to authority, then like, for example, David. David's dad told him, go to the battlefield and go give your brothers cheese and bread for the people then. And then David didn't say, no, I'm busy playing on my iPad. Or no, I'm busy on the phone. You know, I'm busy throwing the, the sling. No, he, he submitted. He took the bread and the cheese and he went. And what happens? He became a warrior because he submitted. Hallelujah. So when you have the wisdom of God, there are five main benefits. You guys know them. Length of days, riches and honor, Pleasures and shalom. Hallelujah. So when, when you have, I am the wisdom of God in Christ, then what does that mean? In your spirit, 
you have the health of God in Christ. So when you're sick, that's just a symptom. It's not, you're not sick. In your spirit, you are the health of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Because shalom is health. Length of days. I will live and not die. Then you have riches. I'm not poor. In my spirit, I'm the richness, the wealth of God in Christ. All the wealth of God is in your spirit. Because Jesus is rich. Amen. The Holy Spirit is rich. And then, honor, respect. Amen. There's weight. When you say something, there's weight to your words. That's why it's important not just to say, say uh, idle words. To speak properly because there's weight to your words. And then, pleasures. Many of the young people today can't feel pleasure. Why? Because they, they continue to stimulate their dopamine. Like playing on the phone, doing all these things. But as a believer, you can experience pleasure. Because the pleasure of God is in you, Jesus. And then shalom. What's shalom? <laughs> shalom is so many things. Eh? Shalom is completeness, safety, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, quietness, peace, tranquility, contentment, peace in human relationships, peace with God and peace from war. Wow! That's shalom. And you have that shalom because I am the wisdom of God in Christ. But you say, no, I don't have that shalom. No, Jesus says He gives that shalom to you. In John 14 verse 27, He says, and who's Jesus? Wisdom. So wisdom says, shalom I leave with you. Shalom I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So that's the key. Wisdom says, let not your heart be troubled. So you need to guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? By keeping your thoughts on Christ. Keeping your thoughts on Jesus. When you guard your heart, I trust in Jesus alone. Because when you trust in Him alone, when you depend on Him alone and not on your abilities, you guard your heart. And then shalom flows, which I just said, shalom is so many things. Hallelujah. Are you guys following? So who are you? Say, thank you, Lord. I am the power of God in Christ. And thank you, Lord. I am the wisdom of God in Christ. And the next one, all of you know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hey? You guys know that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So I'm not going to go through the verses for that one. Because I've mentioned it so many times. When you are the righteousness of God in Christ, what happens? You bear fruit of righteousness. Hey? And what's that? The fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And then grace. You receive abundant grace when you are the righteousness of God. And it flows into eternal life. A relationship with God. You can have a relationship with God. Why? Because you have the righteousness of God in Christ. And then it flows into resurrection life for your body. If something's dead, hey, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Resurrect. And then because you have the righteousness of God in Christ, when it, that life flows through you, there should be abundant joy, happiness, double happiness. Amen. Okay, you guys, it can be happy. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then, if you have a righteousness of God in Christ, you can pray without ceasing. Because your prayers are righteous. It's the righteous man that's praying. And the, James says, the prayers of the righteous avail much. The prayers of the righteous have wonderful results. So you can pray without ceasing. If I'm not the righteousness of God, why should I pray? Because I don't have results. But if I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, I can pray because there's wonderful results. So if you drive by a traffic accident, you can say, Thank you, Father, for helping those people. You know? You, why? Because your prayers have wonderful results. You can pray about everything. Because you have a righteousness of God in Christ. And then, I am the redemption of God in Christ. I've been redeemed. This body has been redeemed. The Bible says Jesus bought me with a price. Eh? I, he paid for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And I've been redeemed from what? I've been redeemed from sin, from the law, and from the curse. Hallelujah. So I'm no longer under the law. I don't have a sin nature. 
And the curse has no hold on me. Why? Because I'm the blessed. I am the blessed. And I have the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. And what are some of the things the curse does? The curse gives sickness. The curse gives poverty. The curse gives disasters. So when these things happen, you can say, No, I am the redeemed. I am the redeemed of God in Christ. I am the redemption of God in Christ. In Galatians 3 verse 10 to 14 it says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11, But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the righteous shall live by faith. So we don't live by doing, we live by faith. Verse 12 says, Yet the law is not a faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. But how do we live? We live because of Christ. We don't live because of the law. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say has. He, Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now. Some people forget the next part. They stop there. They say. Okay. I'm redeemed from sin. I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed from the law. But then they forget verse 14. That says. That the blessing of Abraham. Might come upon the Gentiles. In Christ Jesus. That we might. Receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So I have the blessing of Abraham. I have received the Spirit. Hallelujah. And what's the blessing of Abraham? To be an heir of the world. To be an heir of the cosmos. Of the universe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, I am blessed. But so why are you blessed? You're blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. And you're so blessed that that blessing needs to overflow. Hallelujah. Because it's hard to be a blessing when there's only a little blessing. When you've got a lot of blessing, it's easy to bless. <laughs> Are you guys still with me? Yes. Okay. Okay, let me just read the last verse. Okay, it says, So it's Luke 6 verse 43. I'll give you guys time to look it up. Luke 6, verse 43. Um, Philip has the Bible memorized, so he doesn't need a Bible. <laughs> so Jesus says in Luke 6 that a tree is known by its fruit. Now, we are, like Jesus said, we are branches connected to the vine. Now, what separates a branch from the vine or a branch from a tree? Nothing, it's connected. So the same way, if the tree is the power of God, then the branch is also the power of God. If the tree is the wisdom of God, then the branch is also the Wisdom of God. If a tree is the righteousness of God, then the branch is also the righteousness of God. If a tree is the redemption of God, the branch is also the redemption of God. And if a tree is holy, then the branch is holy. So Jesus says, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns. Nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. Verse 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Do you hear that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So who are you in your heart? Who are you? You have the power of God, you have the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, and the redemption of God. So you must speak it. You must say it. Hallelujah. So when you've got an ailment, say, I am the redemption of God in Christ. I've been redeemed from sickness. Eh? If 
you feel sad, say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I've got the joy of God. If you don't know what to do, you say, I am the wisdom of God in Christ. Thank you, Father God, for your wisdom. If you need to pray for someone that's sick, say, I am the power of God in Christ. I have the hands of God and the tongue of God. Hallelujah. And the knowledge of God. So when you're writing a test, for example, there's no students here, but if you're writing a test, say, I am the power of God in Christ. I have the knowledge of God. And the Holy Spirit will remind me all things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you guys excited? <laughs> okay. So we started off in John 6 verse 56. It says, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. So we receive life from Christ. And like we know, so we have a branch. Jesus is the vine. And obviously the roots go into the soil. But what's the soil? Love. So we get our life from the love of God. Amen. So you need to keep on meditating on the love of God. That Jesus loves us. Daddy God loves us. Holy Spirit loves us. And then that life flows into you because He eats my flesh and drinks my blood. It remains in me. What's the body of Christ and the blood of Christ? It symbolizes His love. Hey, the bread, the body is the love of God. The love of Jesus. The blood was shed so that we can be forgiven, so we can have a relationship, so we can be the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. So when you partake of the communion, you're partaking of His love. And then you're receiving that life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Abba, that you bless us and keep us. Thank you, Abba, that you make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And thank you, Abba, that you lift up your countenance upon us and give us your shalom, peace. From Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, in Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you for coming.